Welcome to this installment of Beam Analysis and Design and we have already worked through in previous videos uh, how to find the area moment of inertia for this particular cross-section. We developed the shear force diagram and the bending moment diagram for this uh, loaded setup. Then from there we were able to calculate the bending stress uh, based on both the I and the uh, bending moment. So we used the bending moment right there. And we found out that uh, this is not a good material that we had chosen. It was a nylon 6.6 material, but it was not a good choice because the design stress was much less than the stress that we actually wanted to put on it. Uh, well, we calculated the shear stress anyway. That calculation required the use of the general shear formula. Then we went to the deflections and we had to do a number of calculations to figure out the deflections on this using the modulus of elasticity for the nylon and the area moment of inertia of our designed cross-section and we found that our uh, design was quite wanting in the deflections department as well that our precision was way uh, too low and our deflections were way too high so the challenge now is to redesign this in wood so instead of showing the calculations here I'm going to go to a different program so let's get started now to do this redesign we are tasked with the following we need to choose a species of wood, could be anything, um, and then figure out the lightest that will work. So we need to find a cross section that will work. And um, we can use side by side shapes, and we might need to iterate. So we might be able to find something that works, kind of, but we need to make sure that it works completely. Well, what is going to make the wood fail? It could fail in, as was uh, indicated, in either bending or it can fail in shear. Now wood is particularly sensitive to shear stress, so we always have to check uh, both of them uh, fully. So my choice here is, uh, and you can choose whatever you want to yourself, but I'm going to choose uh, number two, southern pine. Now, in practice, finding the allowable bending and shear stresses for a particular species and grade of wood uh, is actually quite complicated. It depends on many things. Uh, none the least the amount of water that is in the particular uh, specimen, uh, the conditions that it's going to be under, uh, and many other issues. Uh, using the Mott textbook, it uh, simplifies things. And here we have a copy uh, from online for that uh, textbook. It's a good textbook, so I recommend that you buy it and keep it. But here's that southern pine, another number two right there. And in bending, it has an allowable stress of 6.9 megapascals and allowable stress in shear of 0.48 megapascals. Notice how uh, much weaker it is in horizontal shear than bending. In metals, it's roughly about 50% uh, or maybe 60% of the bending stress is the shear stress. In this case, it's uh, not even 10%. So uh, we are using an allowable bending stress. I like to call it stress ball here. Um, uh, 6.9 megapascals. And an allowable shear stress of only 0.48 megapascals. Okay, that's uh, going to be very important here. So 
let's look at bending stress first. Now we are going to go back to this equation. Stress equals m c over i. But remember the other equation we had, which was m over s? Well, timber comes in these standard shapes. So we can use this equation, which is a little bit simpler. So what we do is we set our allowable bending stress equal to this m over s. And we have our m. So let's uh, just put this in here. So our allowable bending stress equals m over s. Now we have this. We just found that right up here. And we have our bending moment that we calculated way back in part two of this problem. And all we need to do is find s. So we'll rearrange this equation. And s, our shape modulus, is equal to m over allowable bending stress. And our bending moment was 318,000 Newton millimeters. Then we're going to divide that by this value up here of 6.9 megapascals. And a megapascal is a Newton per square millimeter. And that calculates out to 46,000 and change millimeters to the third. Okay, so now we have this value for our S or our shape modulus of 46,094 millimeters to the third. And we just need to look for a shape that has at least that much S. And here we are back at that same reference. And if you look at a, uh, the different sizes here, we have the section modulus of 50.1 times 10 to the third millimeters cubed for a two by four. So that's just a little bit more than what we were looking for. So uh, that is going to be our first stab at this. So uh, we can use 2 by 4 where we have S equals 50.1 times 10 to the third millimeters cubed. And so let's see. So that's greater than the required S. So that's good to know. So this should work in bending. And let's see what happens in shear. The area is equal to 3.39 uh, times 10 to the third. So we can go back this. And we got 3. 3, 9 times 10 to the third, and that's square millimeters. And now we can check shear. So bending seems okay. All right, so to check shear, we use our special shear stress formula, which is 3 halves v over a. This is what we can use when we have a rectangle. And uh, we'll just copy that value v from the previous uh, shear force diagram. And uh, our maximum v maximum is 1,451 newtons. And our area is down here, 3.39 times 10 to the third square millimeters. And 
we end up with 0.64 megapascals. And this is a problem because that is greater than the allowable shear stress of 0.48 megapascals. So we need to do something different. So we need to change the size. So when I said we had to iterate, well, this is what I'm talking about. So let's just bump it up to a 2 by 6. Now, 2 by 6 will give us a section modulus of 124,000 and an area of 5.32 times 10 to the third square millimeters. So area is 5.32 times 10 to the third square millimeters and our S is 124 times 10 to the third cubic millimeters. This should work. We're doing our calculations. Stress equals M over S. We get 318 thousand Newton millimeters all over 124 thousand millimeters cubed and that yields 2.56 megapascals which is definitely less than the allowable bending stress of 6.9 megapascals. And then our shear stress is 3 halves V max over the area is 3 halves times 1451 newtons all over our area which is now 5.32 5.32 times 10 to the third square millimeters and that gets us 0 0.41 megapascals and that is a good thing because that's less than our allowable shear stress, which is 0 0.48 megapascals. So uh, we have now a new design, which is simply the 2x6, and have shown clearly that the stresses involved will be less than the allowable bending stress and less than the allowable shear stress. Notice though that uh, the shear stress is uh, definitely closer to the allowable shear stress than the bending stress is to the allowable bending stress. So for this video we took a failing design of cross-section and material and we're challenged to make a new wood design based on bending and shear. We had to choose a uh, particular species, make sure it was the lightest shape, and possibly iterate. Now the uh, uh, also it was um, to be a standard shape. So we chose uh, number two southern pine and uh, found the values in the book for our allowable stress both in bending and in shear. Uh, used our bending stress equation to find our required section modulus here and then looked up what would fit for that and we found that a 2x4 should do f just fine in terms of bending uh, it would uh, it had some more uh, section modulus than was required 
and then uh, uh, that should have been fine except we also have to check here so we looked at the area for the 2 by 4 used our shear stress equation of 3 halves V max over A and plugged in our V from uh, the, the second video where we found the uh, shear force and bending moment diagrams and then divided that by our new area for our 2 by 4 cross section and it was found wanting. It uh, ended up with a uh, shear stress that was definitely too high uh, beyond the allowable shear stress. So we had to go back to the drawing board and choose uh, the next lightest size. So we chose 2 by 6. Remember, we were trying to make it the lightest here. Could have chosen something really huge, but that wouldn't make any sense, neither in cost nor efficiency. So uh, we wrote down the uh, uh, values that we needed for that, plugged them back into our bending and shear stress equations, and showed that they were acceptable. Well, I hope that this series has helped you learn about the analysis and design of beams, uh, the issues that are involved, the considerations that must be kept. We've got uh, the three major types of issues, geometry. So we considered uh, the cross sections, we considered the lengths, uh, the area moments of inertia, the uh, first moment that we even had to do that for the uh, the shear stress and uh, we also had uh, loading that we considered uh, so that's going to obviously affect everything so how to address the loading how to find the key aspects of it uh, whether it's maximum bending moment or maximum shear force uh, you can also find the other shear forces or bending moments at any specific location using our diagrams then there were the material considerations. There is tensile stress, the modulus of elasticity, the flexural modulus, allowable stresses, and that leads into the allowable or required issue. So you might have to find the required uh, geometry here, the uh, allowable stresses on the material, uh, possibly a maximum loading, although we didn't do that. But uh, these three considerations may be limited by what's allowable uh, with regards to the material. So thank you very much for watching and I hope that you learned a lot.